Reese Whisper Sister. Um, I know it's been quite a while since I've made a video, and um, I don't know, I'll, I was going to do an update video a few weeks ago. In fact, I made one um, at the beginning of October, but um, shortly after that, um, a bunch of stuff changed for me. I don't think it's 
happened yet, but I think it's, yeah, I think it's happening. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm there yet, quote unquote, but I can feel it. I can feel changes happening and, and it's because I'm having to sit with myself and, you know, not run to someone else to make me feel um, less alone. Anyway, so I thought I'd read this because maybe somebody else out there might um, get something from it as well. And um, also, uh, well, to be completely honest, a part of my motivation for making this video is that the person that I am currently missing knows about my channel and um, potentially might listen and I just to make some kind of contact, <laughs> even if I don't hear anything back, and also just to let them know um, where I'm at, what I've been doing, um, or more what I've been learning. Whether they listen or not, whether they care or not, is, uh, is not my... Uh, I can't really control that, but <laughs> just in the interest of complete disclosure, that's part of my for making this, but I do think that this, what I'm about to read, may be um, useful to you guys, and uh, anyway, that's enough introduction, I guess. So, um, it's, it's sort of set up, I guess it's sort of like an advice column format, you know, people write in with questions and then this, this dude answers them. So the question in this case was, um, I suffer immensely from loneliness, what can I do about it? And I'll read most of this, he gets into a few things that I'm not, uh, I'm going to leave out just because I don't personally know how much I agree with it. He, he seems to be a, a real advocate for, like, um, free love, no, like, dispelling the institution of marriage and this kind of stuff, and I, I hesitate on that one because, uh, I mean, the concept's great, yeah to be so free with your love that you have no attachment whatsoever and you can just give it to anyone at any time. But um, I do think that, I mean, for me personally, I think that um, that's true. I, I, and I do want to, I mean, love is free by definition. I don't think it needs to be um, limited to one person, but other things that come along with a romantic relationship, such as sex and just in order to build the other things that make up um, a, a really deep, committed, r romantic relationship. You know, the love can exist between a friend. Um, you, you can love anyone. You can love a stranger, but... I, I, well, I don't know about you, but I obviously wouldn't have sex with a stranger, <laughs> you know? Um, in order to build things like trust and knowing, really deep knowing, safety and all of those kinds of things, um, you know, I, I see those as being worthwhile, and I think, I don't think those can exist in, um, in that sort of open, free love scenario, so I'm, I'm gonna leave all that stuff out, that's, that's a topic for another discussion, really, but what he has to say about loneliness versus aloneness, or, yeah, is really, really struck a chord in me, so. I suffer immensely from loneliness, what can I do about it? And his answer is this. The darkness of loneliness cannot be fought directly. It is something essential for everyone to understand that there are a few fundamental things which cannot be changed. This is one of the fundamentals. You cannot fight with darkness directly, with loneliness directly, with the fear of isolation directly. The reason is, all these things do not exist. They are simply absences of something, just as darkness is the absence of light. Now what do you do when you want the room not to be dark? You don't do anything directly with darkness, or do you? You cannot push it out. There is no way possible to make some arrangement so that the darkness disappears. You have to do something with light. Now that changes the whole situation, and that's what I call one of the essentials, fundamentals. You don't even touch the darkness. You don't think about it. There is no point. It does not exist.
exist, it is simply an absence. So just bring light and you will not find darkness at all, because it was the absence of light, simply the absence of light. It was not something material with its own being, not something that exists, simply because light was not there, you got a false feeling of the existence of darkness. You can go on fighting with this darkness your whole life and you will not succeed. And just a small candle is enough to dispel it. You have to work for the light because it is positive, existential, it exists on its own. And once light comes, anything that was its absence automatically disappears. Loneliness is similar to darkness. You don't know your aloneness. You have not experienced your aloneness and its beauty, its tremendous power, its strength. In dictionaries, loneliness and aloneness are synonymous, but existence does not follow your dictionaries. Loneliness is absence, because you don't know your aloneness. There is fear, and you feel lonely, so you want to cling to something, to somebody, to some relationship, just to keep the illusion that you are not lonely, but you know you are, hence the pain. On the one hand, you are clinging to something that is not real which is just a temporary arrangement, a relationship, or a friendship. And while you are in the relationship, you can create a little illusion to forget your loneliness. But this is the problem. That although you can forget your loneliness for a moment, just the next moment you suddenly become aware that the relationship or the friendship is nothing permanent. Yesterday you did not know this man or this woman. You were strangers. Today you are friends. Who knows about tomorrow? Tomorrow you may be strangers again, hence the pain. The illusion gives a certain solace, but it cannot create the reality so that all fear disappears. It represses the fear. So on the surface you feel good, at least you try to feel good. You pretend to feel good to yourself. How wonderful the relationship is, how wonderful the man or the woman is. But behind the illusion, and the illusion is so thin you can see behind it. There is pain in the heart, because the heart knows perfectly well that tomorrow things may not be the same, and they are not the same. Your whole life's experience supports this, that things go on changing. Nothing remains stable. You cannot cling to anything in a changing world. You wanted to make your friendship something permanent, but your wanting is against the law of change, and that law is not going to make exceptions. It simply goes on doing its own thing. It will change everything. And perhaps in the long run, you will understand one day that it was good, that it did not listen to you, that existence did not bother about you, and just went on doing whatever it wanted to do, not according to your desire. It may take a little time for you to understand. You want this friend to be your friend forever. But tomorrow he turns into an enemy, or simply, he is no longer with you. Somebody else fills the gap, who is a far superior being, and then suddenly you realize it was good that the other one was lost, otherwise you would have been stuck with him. <sighs> I don't know about that, that doesn't really help in the moment. Anyway, um, but still, the lesson never goes so deep that you stop asking for permanence. You will start asking for permanence with this new man or woman. Now this should not change. You have not really learned the lesson that change is simply the very fabric of life. You have to understand it and go with it. Don't create illusions. They are not going to help. And everybody is creating illusions of different kinds. There are people who are after power, but the reason is the same. When they are in power, so many people domination. They are not alone. They are great political and religious leaders, but power changes. One day you have it, another day it is gone, and suddenly the whole illusion disappears. You are as, lo as lonely as nobody else is, because others are accustomed to being lonely. You are not accustomed. Your loneliness hurts you more. Society has tried to make arrangements so that you can forget loneliness. Arranged marriages are just another effort for you to know that your wife is with you. All religions resist divorce for the simple reason that if divorce is allowed, then the basic purpose of marriage was invented. The basic purpose marriage was invented for is destroyed. The basic purpose.
purpose was to give you a companion, a lifelong companion. But even though a wife will be with you, a husband will be with you for your whole life, that does not mean that love remains the same. In fact, rather than giving you a companion, they give you a burden to carry. You were lonely, already in trouble, and now you have to carry another person who is lonely. And in this life there is no hope, because once love disappears, you are both lonely both have to tolerate each other. Now it is not a question of being enchanted by each other. At the most, you can patiently tolerate each other, but your loneliness has not been changed by the social strategy of marriage. See, yeah, I don't know. I... I still want to believe that it's possible to find a way to have a marriage or a long-term and if the person 
person loves somebody else, there will not be any jealousy, because you loved out of too much joy. It was not a clinging. You were not holding the other person in prison. You were not worried that the other person may slip out of your hands, that somebody else may start having a love affair. When you're sharing your joy, you don't create a prison for anybody. You simply give. And you don't even expect gratitude or thankfulness because you're giving. Not to get anything, not even gratitude. You are giving because you are so full. You have to give. Um, so if anybody is thankful, you are thankful to the person who's accepted your love, who's accepted your gift. He has unburdened you. He allowed you to shower on him. And the more you share, the more you give, the more you have it. So it does not make you a miser. It doesn't create a new fear that I may lose it. In fact, the more you lose it, the more fresh waters are flowing in from springs you're not even aware of. Or if you not, you have not been aware of before. Okay, so I will not say do anything about your loneliness. Forget loneliness, forget darkness, forget pain. They are just an absence of aloneness. The experience of aloneness will dispel them instantly. So look for your aloneness. And the method is the same. Just watch your mind, be aware, be more, become more and more conscious. So finally, you are only conscious of yourself. That is the point when you become aware of aloneness. But always look whether anything you are facing as a problem is a negative thing or a positive thing. If it is a negative thing, then don't fight with it. Don't bother about it at all. Just look for the positive of it, and you will be at the right door. Most of the people in the world miss because they start fighting directly with the negative door. There is no door. There is only darkness. There is only absence. And the more they fight, the more they find failure. And the more they become dejected, pessimistic, and ultimately, they start finding that life has no meaning. That it is simply torture. But their mistake is they entered from the wrong door. So before you face a problem, just look at the problem, whether it is an absence of something, and all your problems are absences of something. And once you have found what they are absence, they, what they are the absence of, then go after the positive. And the moment you find the positive, the light, the darkness is finished. Okay, so hopefully that made some sense and was not too long. separate things going on right now. One is that I need to be alone. I've needed to be alone for a long time. Um, and what I mean by that actually is not necessarily that I need to be in a vacuum, you know, by myself, but I need, I guess like what he's talking about, I need to experience my aloneness, my um, independence, and then continue to be that. I don't want to be alone. I don't I don't want to be isolated from people. I want to connect. I always want to connect. But I I in the past up until right now have tended to completely lose myself in those connections and then then it just poisons everything. are walking, hopefully that's not too loud. Um, I'm going to stop this and start over, or start again. Okay, so yeah, um, that's one of the things that I'm dealing with right now, um, focusing on and, and trying to learn, and forcing myself to sort of sit through my discomfort, because I know that um, either something for me to learn in it and 
least I guess mentally to do it, to start to, you know, there's no one to distract me, there's no one to do it for me, it's, it's just me facing fears constantly, <laughs> little ones and sometimes big ones, and, you know, finding that I'm okay, like I'm, I'm, I'm alive, I, I haven't, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is good, you know, it, I can see that already, I know, and I'm sort of, yeah, I've committed myself, I guess, to seeing this through, learning this lesson, however I need to do that, and that's what has me sort of staying away from somebody that I would much rather be close to, um, because it seems that's the only way at the moment, and yeah, <laughs> okay. I won't get into all that really, but it's just so, you know, I, I, I've had this, this thought has occurred to me a number of times, both in my own relationships and also watching friends in relationships. so much potential, you know, there's, there's always the, it's like the, I don't want to say the best parts, but like the strongest, um, most loving parts of each person, if those two parts are able to interact, it's magic, you know, um, you can see people's connections, and it starts out so wonderful, and then fears come up, and especially in, in, in close romantic, well, not even romantic relationships, really, I've seen the same things happen in friendships, you know, my, my relationship with my best friend has been, uh, an arena where both of us have had to deal with a lot of really, um, uncomfortable things, and we've both, you know, committed to keeping, again, that part of ourselves connected, knowing that that as far as I see it, that is the reality. Anything else is just fear, and it's a lie, really. You know, fear, oh, that's a topic for another video, I guess. This is getting long, but it's something I feel very strongly about. Um, you know, yeah, it's something that I've come to realize is a fundamental thing that I want to cultivate in my own life, and definitely something that I want in a partner is someone who can connect with me on that level and remain committed to facing whatever fears come up that might get in the way as long as as long as we think that that bond is is there still and it's real you know with uh, Sam and I my best friend we've gone through some really um, big conflicts and but we've always known that circumstances, letting someone know you that well, and being that vulnerable and open with someone, um, as long as you trust that they love you and they're not going to use their knowledge to hurt you, um, it can create a very, very powerful ally, because that person's in a position to, you know, know what you're going through, know what's going on you, why, why you're doing what you're doing, what fears are triggered, all of that kind of stuff, and they can help you to choose to have faith and face those fears, and they can support you, and all of that kind of stuff, I mean, that's beautiful, I mean, it's not even about a romantic relationship, I think any, any relationship, that's, that's the power of companionship, is having someone in your corner, <laughs> I guess, but I'm just, I'll just talk about me. The problem for me is that when it comes to a romantic relationship and a really, really close connection, connected relationship, it, yeah, it's fears. There's, I, I, so many of my fears, you know, once you let someone in like that and you see 
losing that or being shut out then is so scary, so terrifying, uh, or just so yourself ruin something just because you're scared, you know, and to not be able to get past it. <sighs> I often find myself uh, getting very adamant about things that I feel strongly about and um, quite idealistic, I guess, and it's like, well, I can see, you know, it's like when you watch a movie and, and the two the characters are some collision course or they're, you know, somebody's doing something stupid or they're locked in some sort of struggle and you can see so clearly how they can get out of it and you're just, you know, frustrated with, it's just like, if you could only just see it this way and just do that, it, it would be so easy, but when you're so close to it, you just, you often can't see those things and you certainly can't tell somebody else what those things need to be for them. decide what they need, and, and it's fucking frustrating as hell sometimes. <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, the loneliness versus aloneness thing is definitely on my, it's under my microscope at the moment, um, and it's what's keeping me able to stay stay alone. But aside from that, you know, if that was not an issue, um, the fact is I'm just missing someone. And um, it sucks that, you know, because of these issues, and I mean, I'm sure they've got their own issues, but because of issues, because of, of, of I just hate that. I hate that letting those things win, I guess, but sometimes I guess you just need to, um, you need to undergo the, the, the struggles to really learn the lessons, you know. Um, I remember when I, when I broke up with my ex, um, I knew it was going to be difficult and I was scared to, of what was coming next, but at that time, I, I really, for a, quite a while, relationship and just hadn't really given myself permission to leave or to admit that I wasn't happy and so I would say all the right things. I would say that I wanted to work it out and that I loved, oh, I did love him, but I would say that I was committed and, you know, all of those kinds of things, but deep down I knew I was, I was lying. And when I finally made the call, I was so relieved, you know, as much as I was afraid, I was, I was so relieved. And, um, in this case, it doesn't feel like that at all. I don't feel relieved. I don't feel glad that this that I'm, this person's not around. Um, it's the opposite. I feel like I'm having to stay away or let them stay away, you know, sort of because I should or because it's for my own good. And um, part of that is true. This, this part of it is true. This, I need to be doing this. Um, there's a lot of other parts that I've been telling myself this, this thing I shouldn't be doing. I shouldn't be, um, close to this person because it's keeping me from other things or something like that. And the fact is that's all bullshit. I don't care about any of that. But this, this is real, so... This is what I'm doing. Anyway, um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, in order to maintain uh, an honest attempt at staying alone, I'm not gonna make a whole lot of videos like this where I'm sort of, you know, half hoping that they may hear it or whatever and spilling my heart and soul out into the internet like I used to do. I mean, that's, um, it's not a habit that 
I've started doing rune videos again on my other channel. I, I can't do tons of them, so again, if you request them, feel free, and I'll, I'll try and get to them all, but um, what I'm going to probably do is just like generic readings, because I probably won't have time to do the readings quick enough that I can respond to specific issues, you know, that kind of thing, but anyway, feel free to contact me over on um, my other channel. It's uh, just Whisper Sister Runes. And if you like those rune videos, I've got a few, I think two or three that I've put up in the last couple weeks that are there for you to listen to. Yeah, and um, I'm going to do a couple more singing videos at some point. My mom, there's a couple songs my mom wants me to put up. <laughs> so I've had some requests from my mom. Um, so I'll put those up. Um, I've got my brother staying with me for a couple of weeks still. And um, anyway, I guess I, I, I did, you know, for all of you who may be listening, I did want to say hello to you all as well. And I also really wanted to just read this and discuss this a bit. Feel free to comment, feel free to, you know, respond. If you have anything to say on the topic or any advice, um, I'd be glad to hear it. And, um, if 